Austin, Alabama. So glad to be with you. I looked around and I saw Jimmy Harrell, Brother Nat, back here, and Brothers over here, and Brothers Lane. I know whether that's in Alabama, Brothers Eagle, or down in Georgia, or just wherever. But wherever two or three are gathered, yeah. we're just happy because yeah. he promised to be in our midst. Amen. Yeah. And as our brothers had just said, Brother Clarence, Brother Longori, you didn't come here to see me. I didn't come here to see you, but I come here to be with you. Yeah. I didn't come here to vindicate a message, but to be a witness to yeah. the yeah. message. Yeah. I believe it's the infallible word of God brought to us by the voice of God, yeah. which I believe it was God's voice interpreting his own word. Yeah. And not only did he preach a message, but he truly lived the message for yeah. And I'd like to just say that it's an honor to be here with you, and I wish for, I'd like to greet you from Brother Joseph and all the family, and please take it all been with you. And the only one that could come besides the Lord Jesus, and that's all we need, was my wife. And she's sitting back there in the back somewhere. I see her. Where you at? Where's my wife? She's getting old. She's going to be grandma here in a little while. That's why this is what I'm doing. So we're just happy to be here. We have this time of fellowship. And you know, you know, it's a long time since I was in Anderson. I guess it was... I don't know how many years I shared with our brother Lickers many, many years ago, and I know many of you people, I remember your faces when we was here together. What a dear saint of God that went to this reward. Yes. And I know he's truly missed. And I know when I come into town, I saw a little phone booth there, and I stopped and I told the wife, I said, that's where I stopped and called Brother George that day when I come in. And, you know, we have friends, then we have special friends. That's right. That's right. And truly, my brother was a special friend to me. So may God bless his family and all the friends and loved ones here here tonight. And just so happy that all of you could come out. And how many of you have never seen the film that Brother Bram spoke about on Israel? It's called Three Minutes to Midnight. How many of you have never seen it? Let me see your hands. Well, bless your heart. You're in for a treat tonight. Yes, sir. And then on the, on the end of the film, I've incorporated the film of... Brother Brandon, where he speaks on to the brothers there on the 20th century prophet. And I believe that we're in that period of time. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a minister, but I like to tell how my candle got lit. You know, sometimes it gets started. Kind of like Little Rose said, he said, you got to preach one day, Brother Longoria. You know, he reached down there and he said, he said he, he got up and he preached about three hours on Sunday morning. And the minister said, uh, the deacons got him at the church and they said, uh, he said, brothers, you know, we certainly enjoyed what you said, but it just took me so long to say it. And he said, uh, usually you're about 15, 20 minutes. He said, yeah, it's all over. He said, yeah, that's right. And he said, well, how come this morning? It's about three hours. He said, well, when I get ready to take the stand and take the pulpit, he said, I just reach in my pocket and I get me a lifesaver and I put it underneath my tongue and I start preaching. And he says, well, it takes just about 15 or 20 minutes for that to dissolve. And he said, when I do, he said, I know it's time to quit. He said, I've said enough. He said, this morning I put one under my tongue. He said, I just sucked on it, sucked on it, sucked on it. And he said, it went on for about three hours, like he said. He said, I took the thing out and it's still as big as it was. He said, I had a button. <laughs> so I didn't have any lifesavers, so I'm not going to do that. But maybe in the morning we'll find some and we'll just start them right there. So I knew if I got up here, it's going to just take a little bit too much time. But like I said, we're just here to do one thing, and that's to magnify the name of our Lord Jesus. I believe we're the most blessed people there are in the world. And I believe we live far below our privileges. I believe that with all my heart. Brother Brown, you know, I said, you know, I said, if we are a Christian and we are a child of the King, we should conduct ourselves as a child of the King. And I was just in a meeting over in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I'll just take just a couple minutes here, Brother Now, and I'll go into the film. But I was in a meeting in Tulsa, Oklahoma this, I don't know when it was, last week, week before last. There's about 1,200 people there. I went into town and I just had to fly in one day and right out the same, excuse me, that next morning. I come down the street and a man picked me up at the airport and I looked over there. We come around to Tulsa, I'm going to familiar in Tulsa there. And I come by, you remember Brother Brown spoke about Brother Or Roberts, yeah. great building, and how God has blessed him in that work. And Brother Brown said he looked over there and he said, he went to Brother Tommy Osborne, a great man of God. And he said, look there and he says, he said, Father, you know, I believe God guides himself and reveals himself in simplicity. You know? And you know, just just like the brother said the other day, he said, I can just take Brother Brandon's sermons and just read the titles and I know that there was more than a man. I believe that, I believe that the same way. And you know, he said, I just went down the street and as I was going there, and he said, Brother Brandon said when he was there about, he was 19 and 60, when he preached God's Eagles, he said, I looked over there and he said, I saw all, all these great things. He said, Lord, he said, where have I failed you? He said, I've got one little typewriter in the back of a little trailer or something. Back home. 
He said, these men have 500 typewriters. He said, human hands hardly ever touch the mail. He said, the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, look up. Very good portion. I went by the Greek building there yesterday, I mean, last week. Nothing to that way. I just looked up there, and there it was, a multi-million dollar building for sale, moved. Done left town, you know. But I looked at that promise that Brother Ben spoke about. That's what we're talking about now. You say, well, how come you say that, Brother Billy? Because I believe that you're in your final portion. I believe that you're getting ready to go home. And I believe that your life and my life has to line up with this word. You know, I see my little wife back there, brother. And I see her back there, and I, I don't want to embarrass her or nothing like that, and I don't mean that's wrong. So I told her, I said, when you got me, you got the best there was. And she don't always agree with that. She, but I said, you know what? I said, when you got me, and the right now, you say, okay, well, let's see how we got two. Now, we get one more, we're okay. You leave that for the Jimmy? Thank you, brother. Everything's okay. I said, you know, I said, there was a lot of, lot of men in the world, but I said, when you and I become one, you quit looking. That's right? I said, you quit looking. I said, you had your choice of all of them out there, but when you took me, you got the best there was. And I said, you know, in my Bible, it says, behold... And the word behold means look out. Yes, sir. Watch out. I'm fixing to do something. I, who's I? The Lord Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I will send unto you. Brother Brandon said every time you see that name, you, you put your name in there. Yeah. So it says, Behold, I, the Lord Jesus, will send unto you, Billy Paul Branham, Elijah the prophet, and that was William Marion Branham. Yeah. And he, William Marion Branham, shall turn the hearts of the children yeah. back to the faith of the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with the curse. And I said, so God kept his word, and when he sent him, I quit looking. That's right. And if you don't believe that God sent him, just start looking, and you will find him. And if you, if you have found him, and you're still looking, you didn't find the same one that I know of. Because when God sent him, he sent what he promised, and that part of the scripture has done, been, fulfilled. And he's already done what he said he would do. I like what Brother Joseph said one time. I said, Joseph, I said, that all the tapes say the same thing. He said, I know, but some of them just says a little bit plainer. And I believe that sometimes, like, when we take this word, we know this is a written word of God. And I believe this is a spoken word of God. And I believe this is the front side of the gun, and I believe this is the back side of the gun. Brother, you can't prove one away from the other because they got to line up. And when they line up, and that prophet says exactly what's here, it'll hit the target every time. I want to read one quote, then I want to sit down. The Lord Jesus loves you. That's you again. Put your name in there, what Brother Brandon said. And he died that you might be well. That's right. Amen. And then he sent me as his prophet that's what he said. to tell you what's the truth. That's right. To me, that says it all, Brother Say. That's right. He loved you so much that he went to Calvary for you. And he died that you might be well. And then he sent you, William Marion Brown, yes, to tell you what's the truth. Amen. Someone says, well, this brother believes it this way and this brother, that's fine. They can be well every way they want to believe. That's, that's not right. But I want to tell you one thing. You put that tape on, it says the same thing every time. Amen. Brother Billy might have it mixed up, but that tape doesn't have it mixed up at all. You say, Brother Billy, I thought you believed this in 62 and you believed this in 82. I don't think I do, but I believe I'll do the same thing. But I'll tell you one thing. That people said whether it was 33, 63, or whatever it was. I believe in spiritual food in the sea. I believe it's just like that little sister, the little colored sister down in Memphis, Tennessee. You remember the story the other man talked about? I think about that, and I believe that's the time that we're in right now. And she had a need of God in her life. She didn't know Brother Brandon by name. Look how much farther along the road than you are. That's right. Because you have recognized the message of the hour. She didn't know Brother Brandon. Brother Brandon didn't know her. Is that right? But God, that's right. But God stopped an airplane. And the, the airplane was grounded in the city of Memphis. That's right. Because there was a saint of God who had a need of God. And he's still Jesus Christ to say yesterday, today, and forever. Whether it's in Alabama, Georgia, where it is, he's still Jesus Christ. To say yesterday, today, and forever. And that what you get is what you expect. If you come to find something criticized, you'll find something criticized, and you're looking at it right now. But if you come to receive something from God, you'll find something that you God for. Just like I said one time, but I'm just a couple of I said one time I knocked at my dad's door in the hotel, and that door come open. And as that door come open, my dad was down on his knees. 
He had his Bible laying before him. He had his, he's on his knees. And he didn't know I'd come to that door and the door come open. He was praying. He said, Lord Jesus, he said, excuse me, Father. He said, but when I was talking to you a while ago, I forgot the ashes. Amen. That's the kind of man he was. Brother, I tell you, when you speak to him like that, you know him. <laughs> Amen. Like the brother said the other day, he said, we stand in the same setting, standing on the promises. He said, most of us are sitting on the premises. Yes. Yes. I believe when we sing songs of glory to God, we ought to worship Him. Yes. We ought to praise Him. We ought to thank Him for what He's doing. Yes. We're the most blessed people in all around the world. They said old Colonel Sanders had the secret recipe. He ain't got nothing on the bride of Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. He's got the secret. And it's delivered to her. Like I told you, my wife, she got the best there was. She quit looking in. If you haven't found that, start looking. And there's a brother here can tell you about it. If you don't, I got a whole bunch of tapes, about 1,100. And it'll say the same thing I ever found. That little pain was grounded there in Memphis. Brother Brandon said, Lord, he said, I got to get up the next morning. He said, I got to catch this plane and go out. And the Holy Spirit began to speak to him and says, Take a walk. He said, Where am I going, Lord? I didn't tell him where he was going. He said, Just take a walk. As he walked down the street, he said, the Holy Spirit said, move this away. Move that away. I like to be led by the Spirit, don't you? Yeah. He said, as he walked around the corner there, he said, Lord, I've got to catch this plane. He says, in 20 minutes, the Holy Spirit said, just keep walking. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't tell him nothing, just keep walking. He said, as he walked on down the street, he said, he got down there. And he said, he got down in the town where the fellow folks lived. And he said, he looked out over this gate. He said, here sat this old auntie over the top of the gate with her arms folded. He said her back was all wet with dew where she'd been there all night long. So he walked down the street and he got right up to her. She said, good morning, Carson. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, yeah. He said, good morning, Carson. He said, good morning, Annie. He said, did you know me? She says, no, sir. He says, my name is Brother Brandon. He said, you ever heard me? He said, I never heard of you, sir. He says, but I knew you was a coming. Yeah. But I knew you was a coming. I said, how did you know I was a coming, Annie? He says, because did you ever read the scripture about the Shunammite woman? He said, yes, I have. He said, I'm just like her. He said, I've got a boy that's gone astray. And brother, I know we all have children sometimes, and they all go astray. But I want to tell you one thing. You place that token over yep. Brother, they might stray, but they won't stay. They can stray, but they won't stay, brother. They've got to come in. Brother Brandon says, the scripture says, they'll bring them in if they have the name on their back in the hospital now. Yeah. Brother, you were looking at one that was in that place. Yeah. Brother, that's so he went to that little woman like that there. She sounded like that Shunammite woman. And she says, I said, Lord... Where is your Elijah? <laughs> she didn't know his name, but she knew that it had to be there. She said, Lord, where is your Elijah? She said, go out of the gate and wait. I'll send you by. The Holy Spirit on the other side said, Prophet, just take a walk. He said, where am I going? I said, no, man, just, just walk and follow me. That's the way we are tonight. Brother Brandon says, my name is Brother Brandon. He said, Jerry Brandon. She said, no, sir, I didn't know. She said, but I knew he was a cunt. He said, he went in that little house and said, she fell on her knees and began to pray for that boy. And God brought that boy. Uh, He's still in Jesus Christ and saying yesterday, today, and forever. Brother Brandon said that plane was grounded there. He went out there to get the last call to get on a plane. He said, in fact, through that same place a few months later, he said, when he gets to this big fine man, he goes there and said, hello, Parson James. He said, hello, son. He said, you remember me in that? He said, no, sir, I don't. He said, I was that boy that was down there in that bed. <laughs> he said, when God sent you by my house, he said, not only am I healed, said, but I'm saved. He's still in Jesus Christ. He said, yesterday was the day of prayer. I was talking to Brother Slay today. I said, Brother Slay, I've looked for something on tape for uh, years and years and years. Not that you question God, but you, know, you just wonder, what, you know, how come we're here? What's, you know, how come we're so late? How come we are here in 1984? When I was in the Democrat Convention, I think I kind of know a little bit more about it. Right? Yeah. You know, that word's got to be fulfilled. Isn't that right? Yeah. I said, I don't know whether this is that woman or not, but I'm going to tell you one thing. If that don't make the bride wake up, I tell you, I better, she better just get up and teach herself a little bit. But it's close. Yeah. Anyway, I was listening to a tape the other day out of Chicago, Elijah. Yeah. And I think it was Elijah, not the field offering. Elijah and what was that? Abraham. Abraham C. Thank you. Abraham C. Elijah and Abraham C. Is that right? Wait, it was entitled something like that. And uh, Abraham made the seed after him or something like that. 61 in Chicago. Brother Brandon says, I like this. You know, I thought, Lord, how come we're still here? Now what you're getting ready to see, the reason I want to just say this to you. You're getting ready to see what Brother Brandon spoke about. Three minutes until midnight. Brother Brandon spoke of the message and brought it down so plain in that meeting. And one of the strongest messages I've ever heard outside of the tabernacle. And he began to come down. It was about a two and a half hour tape. And right at the end, he was making an awful call. The people were just sitting there. 
You can see there was no response, you know. Brother Brandon says, how can you sit under such an anointing? You see the power of God and not make a move. He said it shows the lateness of the hour. He says, do you realize that science said five years ago, this was in 61, he said five years ago that it was three minutes to midnight. He said, do you realize how late it is now? That was 61, but I said, that's 20, about four years ago. He said, do you realize how late it is? He said, do you know what God done? How you think? He said, he reached out with his great hand. And he stopped time. That takes care of all the date set to me. He said he stopped time waiting for the bride to get ready. Brother, that's what you're doing in Oxford tonight. And as you see this film tonight, if there's any change that's within your life that's not pleasing to the Holy Spirit, you better get it right. And as we see this here, he says God has just stopped time waiting for the church to get ready. Brother, I think it's later than what we think. May God bless you, and, and I thank you for coming. And we'll see you in the morning, the Lord willing. But now, just get yourself ready. I think it's Brother Uncle Gordon was singing here a while ago, and he got some heavy turn on his tape. And you know, he says, when he eats, he said, you don't worry about nothing. And I said, you know, whenever I get ready to eat, I just, you can tell I know how to do it, can't you? <laughs> and I said, I just loosen up my tie and just yes. sit back, yes. and I don't have to worry about one thing that's been prepared. Because I have confidence in my wife that everything's prepared. Yes. When I get ready to listen to that tape, I just push that button. And it don't make a difference to me. I don't have to worry about a thing. I just loosen my tie and just sit back and say, Feed me, Lord. Amen. Yes. And that's what we're going to do tonight on this film. And on this film, it shows the Jews returning to the homeland. I know you heard Brother Ben speak about it. He said, People there are 100 years old are coming back to the homeland. That was in 1946. And he said, What are you coming back for? To die? They said, No, to welcome the Messiah. Oh, and Brother Brandon said in 61, he said, God held his hand and stopped time waiting for the church to get ready. Yes. It's later than what we think. As the sister comes to the argument, let's stand and sing, only oh, believe. Son, my sister's just here. My sister's been on this fancy trip. Africa, Europe, and even Israel. Yes, the trip I'll never forget. We visited many wonderful places. None more interesting than this. Thank you, Mr. Jim. Israel, that is interesting. We're hearing a great deal about that new country these days. By the way, my name is Munz. Munz. J. Palmer Munz. That's right. How do you know? Why not a Lake Byron Conference, of course. I can readily understand your interest in Israel. Don't you have an annual conference on prophecy in the Jew? We surely do. Bible students from all over America gather each year at Renona Lake to discuss the significance of current events relating to Israel. Especially as these developments are presaged in Bible prophecy. But frankly, our primary desire is to reach Jews all over the world with the truth that Jesus of Nazareth is their promised Messiah. Israel certainly is a fertile field for Christian missionary activity. By the way, what was your reason for going to Israel? My reason for going to the Holy Land was the same as that of countless other Christians who, for centuries past, had gone there to see with their own eyes the land where Jesus lived and died. Would you mind telling me all about it? Gladly. I was especially in the Bible lands, easily the most important.
recently discovered how the oldest Hebrew manuscripts of the Old Testament extant reputed to have been in existence several hundred years before the time of Christ. An outstanding archaeological value, the Isaiah scrolls established beyond any question that one man was under inspiration of God, the author of that major prophetic work. Professor Sukeni translated for us from the original Hebrew Isaiah's description of the suffering servant who carried our sorrows was bruised for our iniquities. How natural to go from Isaiah to the place of the skull, to Calvary itself, to that site which is accepted by most evangelical scholars as the authentic place of the crucifixion of our Lord. Yards from the 
so likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, no near, even at the doors.
scriptures predicted that the city of Jerusalem would expand and enlarge, spreading out to the south, and to the west, and finally to the north, but at no time to the east. Today, Jewish suburbs surround the old Arab quarters on every side, but to the east.
watching Israel today. I wonder if Christians are as keenly conscious of the import of recent events in Israel in the light of prophecy. Students of Bible prophecy have long believed that that which happens in Israel points the way to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Men everywhere are asking the question, how much time is left? How much time to preach the gospel to the Jew first and then to a winning world? What is the hour on the timepiece of eternity? How much time to complete the task of war missions, which has been assigned to us by the Great Commission? How much time do we have left to disciple men for the Master? How much time before the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice 